ஹாய் ஹலோ வணக்கம் அண்ட் வெல்கம் டு லிட்டில் ஸ்லா யூடியூப் சேனல் டுடே இன் திஸ் வீடியோ வி வில் சி அபவுட் வாட் இஸ் லோட் பேலன்சிங் அண்ட் ஹவு டஸ் லோட் பேலன்சிங் ஒர்க்ஸ் அண்ட் வேரியஸ் அதர் இன்ட்ரெஸ்டிங் இன்ஃபர்மேஷன் அபவுட் லோட் பேலன்சிங் ஸோ ஃபர்ஸ்ட் லெட் சி வாட் இஸ் லோட் பேலன்சிங் ஸோ லோட் பேலன்சிங் இஸ் அ கோர் நெட்ஒர்க்கிங் சொல்யூஷன் தட் இஸ் யூஸ்ட் டு டிஸ்ட்ரிபியூட் traffic across multiple servers in a server form and these load balancers improves the applications availability and responsiveness and prevent server overload and each load balancer sits between client devices and backend servers receiving and then distributing incoming requests to any available server capable of fulfilling them so far we saw about what is load balancer let's now see how does this load balancers work a load balancer may be a physical device a virtualized instance running on specialized hardware or a software process a load balancer may be incorporated into an application delivery controllers which we call as adcs which are designed to broadly improve the performance and security of three tier web and microservices based applications regardless of where they are hosted a load balancer may be able to leverage any possible load balancing algorithms including round robin server response time and the least connection method to distribute traffic in line with current requirements so these load balancers detect the health of back end resources and they do not send traffic to servers that are not able to fulfill the requests and regardless of whether it's hardware or software or what algorithm we use a load balancer distributes the traffic to different web servers in the resource pool to ensure that no single server becomes overworked or overloaded and subsequently unreliable and this action of load balancer effectively minimizes server response time and maximizes the throughput so what is the role of a load balancer the role of a load balancer is sometimes likened to that of a traffic police a traffic cop as it is meant to systematically route the requests to the right location at any given moment and due to this it prevents costly bottlenecks and any unforeseen or any unexpected incidents for the applications so these load balancers ultimately deliver the performance and security necessary for sustaining complex it environments and also they make the workflow going smooth so this load balancing is the most scalable methodology for handling the multitude of requests from modern multiple application multi device workflows in tandem with platforms that enable seamless access to the numerous applications and desktops within today's digital workspaces load balancing supports a more consistent and dependable end user experience for the users Now let's see what is hardware and the difference between hardware and software based load balancers. So first let's see how does the hardware based load balancer works. Hardware based load balancers are typically high performance appliances and they are capable of securely processing multiple gigs of traffic from various types of applications. and these hardware based load balancer 
appliances may also contain built-in virtualization capabilities which consolidate numerous virtual load balancer instances on the same hardware and finally these hardware based load balancer allows for more flexible multi-tenant architectures and full isolation of tenants among other benefits in contrast now let's see the software based load balancers and these software based load balancers fully replaces load balancing hardware while delivering analogous functionality and superior flexibility and these software based load balancers run on common hypervisors containers or as linux processors with minimal overhead on bare metal servers and these software based load balancers are highly configurable depending on the use cases and technical requirements and finally these software based load balancers save space and reduce hardware expenditures so what are some of the common load balancing solutions a load balancer will follow an algorithm to determine how requests are distributed across the servers there are plenty of options in regard ranging from the very simple to very complex and they are and there are in fact more coming in numbers with the advancement of the cloud technologies there are more to expect in coming and there are more under development there are more number of algorithms are getting developed and the first one the round robin load balancing this is a very simple load balancing solution for making sure that a virtual server forwards each client request to a different server based on a rotating list the round robin is simple load balancing solution for making sure that a virtual server forwards each client request to a different server based on a rotating list and this is easy for load balancers to implement but does not take into account the load already on a server there is a danger that a server may receive a lot of processor intensive requests and become overloaded the second algorithm is the least connection method whereas the round robin does not account for the current load on a server it always places in the rotation but this least connection method does make this evaluation as a result so it usually delivers superior performance and the virtual servers following the least connection method will seek to send request to the server with the least number of active connections the third one is the least response time method and this is the more sophisticated than the least connection method because the least response time method relies on the time taken by a server to respond to a health monitoring request and the speed of the response is an indicator of how loaded the server is and the overall expected user experience and some load balancers will take into account the number of active connections on each server as well the fourth algorithm is the least bandwidth method which is a relatively simple algorithm the least bandwidth method looks for the server currently serving the least amount of traffic as measured in megabits per second and similarly the least packets method selects the service that has received the fewest packets in a given time period the fifth algorithm is the hashing methods and this method makes decision based on a hash of various data from the incoming packet and this includes connection or header information such as source or the destination's ip address the port number url or domain name and finally the custom load method enables the load balancer to query the load on individual servers via snmp 
and the administrators defines the server load of interest to query the CPU usage, the memory usage and response time and then combine them to suit their requests. So finally, let's see why is load balancing necessary. With load balancing capabilities that helps IT departments ensure scalability and availability of services. And this advanced traffic management functionality helps a business steer requests more efficiently to the correct resources for each end user. And this offers many other func functions such as encryption, authentication and web application firewalling and that provides a single point of control for securing, managing and monitoring the many applications and services across environments and ensuring the best end user experience. With that we come to an end. Until we meet you in another interesting video, it's bye bye from Vasan Chanmugam and Little Slav.